Lesson six, I will decompose fractions using area models to show equivalence. So this is a continuation of lesson five, where we learn to decompose fractions using area models and showing equivalence. We're going to be doing that again today. All right, so I want you to go ahead and get out your math journal, and I want you to go ahead and write today's date, lesson six, equivalent fractions. We're going to do a couple of things in your math journal today. All right, so in your math journal, first of all, know that when you see this, Please don't copy all of this in your math journal. That's just a waste of your time. Only put the things in your math journal that I tell you to. So right now, in your math journal, I want you to draw me an area model representing one whole, and I want you to shade three-fourths. So after you pause the video and do that, I want you to come back. All right, so hopefully this is what you drew in your math journal. Here's your whole. You divide it into four parts, and you shade it three. So this is an area model representing three-fourths. So just to review what we did yesterday, I want you to think to yourself, how could you decompose these three-fourths into eighths? So instead of having four parts, you want to have eight parts. So if you think you know how to do that, I want you to go ahead and I want you to decompose this area model into eighths and then come back. All right, hopefully you drew this dotted line horizontally, because remember that's how we do this with area models. And now I want you to write this in your math journal. Don't copy the sentence, just copy the answer. I want you to write beside it how many eighths are now shaded. Hopefully you wrote six eighths. And again, it's okay if you wrote this as a fraction with six over eight. I want you to think for a second, what would be a good, um, what would be a good, way to write this as an addition and a multiplication sentence. Let's stop and think about that for a second. Okay, so based on what we've been doing, let's start with an addition sentence first of all. So first of all, we started out with three-fourths. Let me go ahead and get my pen ready here. So we've got three-fourths is what we started with. I'm going to write this up here. Um, we had three-fourths and as an addition sentence that would be, we changed these to eighths, so that would be one-eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth, six times, right, which is really long to write. And that would be the same as six times one-eighth or six-eighths. So here is our addition sentence. We wrote it as a sum of unit fractions. Here is our multiplication sentence, and then eventually that equals six-eighths. Okay. So, what do these addition and multiplication sentences tell you? So, let's think about this for a minute. What does it tell you when you look at 3 fourths is equal to 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 6 times 1 eighth plus equals 6 eighths? What does that tell you? Well, hopefully you said it tells you that it's still the same amount. The number of pieces increased it increased, but the size of the pieces got smaller. So, we had 3 fourths became six eighths. So it looks like if you know if you didn't know that much about fractions, you would think that it got bigger because you went from three pieces to six pieces. But they're actually equal because the sizes of the pieces got smaller. It actually never did change. All right, so in your math journal, we're gonna draw another area model. And I want you to show that two thirds is equal to eight twelfths. Okay, so what model, what fraction will you have to model first and why? Well, if you're going to show that 2 thirds is equal to 8 twelfths, you're going to have to model 2 thirds first, and then you're going to have to decompose it into 8 twelfths, because if you start with 8 twelfths, you can't decompose 8 twelfths into thirds. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So first of all, let's draw an area model representing 2 thirds. Go ahead and do that, and then um, after you're finished, come back to the video. Okay, so here's our 2 thirds. And now we're going to decompose this to show that this is equivalent to 8 twelfths. So how would I take these three pieces and turn them into 12? Well, I'd have to take each of these thirds and decompose them into four parts. So it would look like this. So go ahead and decompose yours if you haven't already. And this shows that 2 thirds is indeed equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 twelfths. So let's write this as a multiplication sentence. So we would write, and I want you to write this in your math journal too, okay? So we would write 2 thirds is equal to, we could say 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth, we could say that 8 times, but it says we can just write it as a multiplication sentence. So that would be 8 times 1 twelfth, which is equal to 8 twelfths. <clears throat> All right. Now, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and look at our problem set. So I want you to go ahead and write your name on your problem set and let's get started today. It says each rectangle represents one whole. Draw horizontal lines to decompose each rectangle into the number of units as indicated. Use the model to give the shaded area as a sum and as a product of unit fractions. Use parentheses to show the relationship between the number sentences. The first one has been partially done for you. Now the first thing I'm going to tell you is we are not going to write all of this every time. Okay, We're not going to write this every time. It is too much to write actually. Okay, I'm going to explain to you what they've done here but we are not going to do this. First of all they had two-thirds and they decompose it into four sixes. That part makes sense. So we had two fours and we decompose it into four sixes. So the first thing they did is they separated these two thirds into one third and one third. And then over here they said, well, each third is equal to one six plus one six. Because if you look at it like this, this is one third and it equals one six plus one six plus one six plus one six. So they, that's what they did here. Okay, so let me say that again. They took their two thirds and they said, okay, well, two-thirds is the same as one-third plus one-third. And then they said, well, each one-third is the same as one-six plus one-six. So that's why these are in parentheses. And then that is equal to four-sixes. Well, then they took these in parentheses and changed them into a multiplication sentence. They said, well, instead of writing one-six plus one-six, we can write two times one-six to represent this and then to change this one, we can change it into 2 times 1 6, which is equal to 4 6. And then they said, well, instead of writing this twice, we can say 2 thirds is equal to 4 times 1 6, which equals 4 6. We're going to skip this whole step here just because I think it's too much writing and it's a little bit confusing. I think we can understand this without that step, so we're not going to be using that. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. So we have fifths. So we have two out of five. And this tells us how many parts we're going to break it down into. Well, if I'm going from fifths to tenths, that means I only have to decompose it one time. So I'm going to cut each of these pieces into half. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So instead of two tenths, I have two fifths, I have four tenths. So I've got two fifths is equal to four tenths. Two fifths is equal to four times one tenth, which equals four tenths. So we're going to skip all that one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth. Instead of writing this four times, we're just going to say it's the same thing as four times one tenth. All right, let's take a look at twelfths. So again, let's take a look at the fraction that we have already. We have one, two, three out of four. So let's label this three fourths. And this tells me I need to break this down into 12 parts. Well, if I just draw one horizontal line, it's going to be eighths, and that's not going to be enough. But if I draw two horizontal lines, now instead of eight pieces, I have 12 pieces. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and there are nine of them. So I have nine twelfths. So three fourths is equal to nine twelfths because three-fourths is equal to nine times one-twelfth. If I went through here and counted, there would be nine one-twelfths, so it's nine-twelfths. All right, let's take a look at number two. This time we have to do, draw our own area models. Draw area models to show the decompositions represented by the number sentences below. Express each sum as a pro express each as a sum and product of unit fractions. Use parentheses to show the relationship between the number sentences. So again, we're not going to do all that because it's asking us to write those same number sentences that down the front, and we're not exactly going to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's draw our area model. So remember an area model is a little bit more squarish than a tape diagram, so I'm going to make it taller. And I'm starting with three-fifths. So that means I need to divide this area model into five parts. So I'm going to try to do this as evenly as possible. If I'm going to make this five parts, that means I'm actually drawing four lines. And once I do, I'm going to go back and count and make sure that I have five. I have one, two, three, four, five. So again, it's not exactly perfect, but it's close enough. Now I'm going to shade three out of five. Remember when we shade, we shade lightly. 
so that we can still see everything. So I've got three out of five like this. And now we're going to decompose this into six tenths. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can't decompose this into six tenths. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that in order to go from three-fifths to six-tenths, all you had to do is just draw one horizontal line. And if you go through here and count, you will now have ten parts. So let's go ahead and label the top of this as three-fifths, and then we decomposed it into six-tenths. Okay, now we're going to write this as an equivalence here. Three-fifths is equal to six-tenths. We know that three-fifths is the same as one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth six times but instead of writing that sum we're going to skip to this multiplication sentence and say six times one tenth which equals six tenths alright now let's take a look at B so we've got three fourths is equal to six eighths why don't you pause the video and do as much of this one all by yourself as you can if you get stuck you can always press play if you do it wrong, the worst thing that happens is you have to erase. That's okay, you learn from that. So go ahead and pause the video now and try to do as much of this as you possibly can by yourself. Okay, so hopefully you got most of this finished. You should have started out with your area model like this. We have to begin by decomposing this into fourths to show three fourths. So I'm going to start by going in half and then I'm going to divide each half in half just like this. Oops. Hopefully yours turned out a little bit better than mine. Mine didn't quite make it, did it? All right, so I want that to go all the way to here. Now I'm going to shade three out of four. So here I go, shading three out of four. So remember, we're only shading this very lightly. We don't want to cover up the lines that show where we decompose this into fours. All right, so there's my three fours. Now I have to decompose these three fours into eighths. Well, to go from four pieces to eight pieces, all I have to do is divide this in half. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go right down the middle and divide this in half. So now I've got three-fourths is what I began with. So I'm going to go ahead and label that at the top. I started with three out of four. And I ended up with six out of eight. And then let's go ahead and write this as a number sentence. So three-fourths does indeed equal six-eighths. Three-fourths would be the same as one-eighth plus one-eighth six times, but instead of writing that, I'm going to write six times one-eighth, which means one-eighth six times, which is equal to six-eighths. <clears throat> All right, last one. Draw an area model for a fraction with the denominator of three, four, or five. Shade in more than one fractional unit. Partition the area model again to find an equivalent fraction. Write the equivalent fraction as a number sentence. If you've written a number sentence already on this problem set, start over. So it's always good to read all the directions before you get started. So I don't want to do something that's already on this problem set. Well, when I go back and look at the problem set, I have used three-fifths, I've used three-fourths, I've used two-fifths, I've used three-fourths, and I've also, let's see, have we used any thirds? Okay, so I have to draw an area model for a fraction with the denominator of 3, 4, or 5. I think I'm going to stick with thirds because we haven't used very many thirds. So let's go ahead and do that first. So draw an area model. And I'm going to use thirds. It says the denominator of 3, 4, or 5. Well, the denominator is the bottom number of a fraction. So that means that you're either going to divide this into thirds, fourths, or fifths. And I'm going to stick with thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this into three parts like this. So I've already done step one. I drew an area model for a fraction with the denominator of three. Now it says shade more than one fractional unit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to choose to shade one like this. Oops, that didn't turn out right. All right, I want to shade this. So let's go back up here and change this to highlighter. I'm going to shade one. Now it says partition the area model again to find an equivalent fraction. So now I'm going to decompose. Partition means to just break it apart. I'm going to decompose this actually into three parts like that. So I started out with 
one third. And now I have one, two, three out of nine. Write the equivalent fractions as a number sentence. So I've got one third is equal to three ninths. One third is equal to, I could say one ninth plus one ninth plus one ninth three times, or I could just say three times one ninth, which is equal to three ninths. All right, so we have spent this entire lesson talking about equivalent fractions and how you can take an area model and you can decompose it into parts. In every single one of these area models, you'll notice we never went back and shaded in more. We always began with a shaded portion, just like right here. I shaded this, I never went back and shaded more. I never erased any, so our fraction stayed the same. It was the exact same amount. We just broke it into smaller pieces, just like if you had a cookie and you broke it into three parts. It's still the same cookie. The cookie did not change sizes. You just broke it into parts. So that's why these fractions are equal. They're just different amounts because the pieces got smaller. So we will continue to add on this concept in the next lesson.